Snake, are you okay? Snake! Major. Snake. Are you all right? You're not hurt? No. That was a hell of a drop, but I'm fine. Looks like there's no way back up, though. I see. Well, anyway, it's good to hear you're not injured. Slipping and falling may not have been part of the plan, but getting into that cave was. Proceed further into the cave. The cave seems to be structured like a maze, but there's an exit somewhere. Find a way out of the cave and head for the aqueduct. The cave seems to be structured like a maze, but there's an exit somewhere. Find a way out of the cave and head for the aqueduct.
that's tasty. Pretty tasty. of the boss. Hey! 
get him! The exit from the cave should be toward the back. Proceed through the cave and find the exit to the swamp aqueduct. Snake, you beat the pain. Not without a tough fight. How did it feel to fight one of the boss's comrades? What are you getting at? I just want to know what it's like to have fought a member of the legendary Cobra unit. That's all. What you want to know is if I can really face the boss. Is that right? Well, that too. Don't waste your time worrying about me. I'll get the mission done. I certainly hope so. So the exit of the cave is up ahead? Right. Go to the end of the cave and you'll come out in an aqueduct overgrown with mangroves. This leads to the Ponizovie Swamp. I see you've caught yourself a Taiwanese cobra. The Taiwanese cobra is native to Taiwan and southern China. It's quite vicious and carries a potent neurotoxin in its fangs. Be careful. If it bites you, go into the survival viewer immediately and use the cure option to inject yourself with serum. Sounds interesting. Don't ask me. Huh? The guide doesn't say. If you absolutely have to know, then you'll just have to try it yourself and see. I didn't say anything. But you were going to ask, weren't you? About the taste? Maybe. I'll talk to you later, Snake. I see you've captured an Indian gavial. The Indian gavial is a crocodile that originally lived in freshwater regions in India and Nepal. Why are Indian crocodiles way out here? They're captive crocodiles that were brought here for research purposes but escaped and became wild again. Indian gavials are large creatures. Adult males grow to over six meters in length. You'll never catch one alive, even if you use the tranquilizer gun. I tried the meat. It was great. Well, good for you. But be careful when capturing an Indian gavial. Normally they're cowardly creatures, but the ones in the forest there are belligerent. Apparently they attack humans. What do you mean? 
They weren't the direct subject of any serious research, but some think they may have become violent as a side effect of the atomic research that was conducted nearby. What can I say? Being attacked. Enemy position unknown. Going into high alert. Acknowledged. Keep your eyes open.
your hands off me. I'm not going anywhere. Really now? How many times must I tell you? Each time you resist, your lover will suffer the consequences. Is that clear? Vulcan. Damn you! Hold it right there, traitor. Let's find out just how lucky you are. Watch closely. guns has a single bullet in it. I'm going to pull the trigger six times in a row. Are you ready? hasn't run out yet. There's no such thing as luck on the battlefield. <laughs> oh. You'd better stay in line from now on. The Cobras will take care of him. <sighs> Has the CIA dog been disposed of yet? Pain is dead. What? He may be a child, but he's definitely one of yours. I fear Khrushchev may have a hand in this. We have no time to lose. You must eliminate him before the final test. Don't worry. They'll be able to handle it. I'm leaving him to you, the fear. is always sleeping. Is he all right? The end is saving what life he has left in him for battle. 
Normally, he's dead. But he'll wake up when the time is right. And when he does, it will be the end for the boy. Sokolov isn't worth your love. You can entertain me until the rain stops. Kuwabara. Kuwabara. <sighs> Sorrow, is that you? Sounds like the Cobra unit's members' names came from the specific emotions they each carry into battle. Emotions? Yeah. For unbearable torment, the pain. For true oblivion, the end. For infinite rage, the fury. For absolute terror, the fear. And for unsurpassed bliss, the joy. The joy? It's another name for the boss. Because of the joy she feels in battle, I suppose. Ah. During the war, she had a partner named the Sorrow. Sorrow and Joy. They say there couldn't have been a more perfect pair.
HQ respond. What's going on? Respond. There's something wrong. Support unit, confirm their status. wrong. Huh? Intruder! You should be around here somewhere. HQ. This is HQ. Patrol here. The enemy is attacking from an unknown position. The enemy is What's going on? Respond! This works.
freeze. Don't shoot! Indicators.
Okay, just a second. Freeze. Uh. No, wait. I see you're disguised as a scientist. It suits you rather nicely. As long as you don't do anything suspicious, like roll or crawl, the enemy should have no reason to suspect you. Sokolov is somewhere inside that lab. Find out where he is and make contact with him. If you want to know where Sokolov is, why don't you ask one of the people around there?
There's no way out of here. Get back to the lab. Disgusting.
If you're looking for Sokolov, he's not here anymore. <laughs> Put that thing away, you'll spoil my drink. So, you're the intruder everyone's talking about. Typical capitalist dog. No manners. And who are you? You mean you've never heard of me? And you call yourself an agent? Very well, then. I am Alexander Leonovich Granin. A man of some importance, if I do say so myself. I am the foremost weapon scientist in the Soviet Union. And the head of the glorious Granin Design Bureau. This is the Order of Lenin. It is an honor of the greatest magnitude, given along with the title of Hero of Socialism to only the finest workers. It was awarded to me in recognition of my brilliant contributions to society. Since the Great Patriotic War, I have created countless weapons in the service of our great communist society. It was thanks to me that we were able to stamp out the Nazi scum. It was I who created the basic design for the mobile ballistic missile system you know and fear as SS-1C. Ah. You're crocked, aren't you? I'm merely drowning my sorrow. Because of him, I've got nothing to do but sit here and drink this crap. Him? Sokolov. It's him you're looking for, isn't it? Because of him, I have been stripped of my authority. My research has come to nothing. Look! It is a revolutionary mobile nuclear missile system, a bipedal tank. A bipedal tank? Yes, a walking tank, a robot. Are you familiar with the theory of the missing link between apes and humans? Well, this technology will be the missing link between infantry and artillery. A kind of metal gear, if you will. And this magnificent metal gear will mark a revolutionary step forward in weapons development. Metal gear? <laughs> but I won't be used so easily. No, no crying myself to sleep. For you see, I'm going to send these documents to my friend in the United States. What? These bastards will live to regret this. And when they themselves become the targets of my creation, they will know my true greatness. Yes, Sokolov's pathetic shagohard pales in comparison to my work. What are you going to do with a rocket engine on a tank? About Sokolov. A tank does not need a rocket. It needs something else. Look at these. Nice shoes. No. Legs. Legs that allow it to go anywhere. Just as when humans learn to walk upright. That is the real revolution in weaponry. Don't you agree? But the fool's in charge. Joe Sokolov. And where is Sokolov? My project has been terminated. The philosopher's legacy has been handed over to him. What the hell are you talking about? The philosopher's legacy. Haven't you heard of the philosophers? The colonel has inherited their immense legacy. Volgin's father was in charge of the philosopher's money laundering activities. In the confusion of the war, 
They somehow ended up with their treasure. And Volgin inherited that treasure illegally. We never need to worry about the military budget. The development costs at our facility are all paid out of the Colonel's deep pockets. The weapons born here will be the genes for creating an entirely new form of warfare. The funding for my research came out of that legacy. Came out of it. Now. My money, my men, all have been diverted to the Shagohad project. Tomorrow, they will be conducting the final test, while Sokolov is making the final preparations in the weapons factory at Volgin's main base, the great fortress of Grozny Grad. Here I am, playing host to an enemy spy and drinking myself into a stupor. That's where they move Sokolov? Yes. And the Shagohad is there too? Of course. Hey! You're not thinking of going to Grozny Grad. Are you mad? It's an impenetrable fortress. I'm sure it is. You'll be killed. I'll take my chances. Wait! What? Listen to me, you fool. I want to help you. Help me? To thank you for your compliment. What compliment? My shoes. Tatiana gave them to me. I wanted to thank you for complimenting me on them. I'll tell you how to get into the fortress. In return, I ask only that you get that idiot out of there and destroy the Shagohad. There is an underground tunnel that runs around the perimeter of the fortress. You should be able to use it to sneak into the base. Head for the mountains. The entrance to the tunnel is located there. Take this. You passed through a warehouse on your way here, didn't you? Yeah. There should have been a locked door inside of it. Do you remember it? Uh... This key will open that door. Beyond that door lies the vast jungle. You can climb up into the mountains from the far end of the jungle. Go back to the warehouse. Use the key to open the locked door and head for the mountains. Got it? Why are you helping me? Unlike Sokolov, the thought of defecting has never once crossed my mind. I love my country. I love this land. I cannot even imagine living anywhere else. I wish to remain a hero of the great motherland. I cannot bear the thought of being hounded into a corner and left to waste away. It is already dawn. You must hurry. I will remain here and nurse my troubles for a little longer. To capitalism! Major, Sokolov's already been moved to the fortress. But that's only what Granin told you, right? He may have been giving you false info. No, he wasn't lying. How can you be so sure? Gut feeling. Good enough for me. According to Granin, you should be able to get to the mountains through a passage located deep in the jungle beyond the warehouse. Right. Then if I climb the mountains, there'll be an underground tunnel leading to Groznygrad near the summit. Start out by going back to the warehouse. 
Use the key you got from Granin to open the door and proceed into the jungle. You remember where the door is, don't you? It's directly north of the door you went in when you came from the aqueduct. Sigand, Granin said something about putting legs on a tank. Do you know what he was talking about? If you ask me, it's gotta be a joke. Not only is making a tank walk on two legs a technical nightmare, but there's no point in making a walking tank to begin with. Putting legs on a tank would raise its clearance, increasing its frontal projection area. It'd also be less stable. Suppose the legs help the tank travel on bad roads. I, I don't see the logic in that. Isn't that what treads are for? I mean, anybody who'd seriously consider making a thing like that has got to be a wacko. Come to think of it, there was a guy in the States who wrote a paper on that subject. What was his name? Emerson? Heinrich? Something like that. I don't really remember. Of course, no one took that seriously. Saving the game, Snake? Snake, have you seen 007 from Russia with Love? Nah, I don't like those movies. Real spies are nothing like James Bond. It's pure fantasy. Snake, I don't think the Major's going to like you saying that. And even though it's fiction, I can't help but comparing myself to Bond. What exactly don't you like about James Bond? I mean, is it the fantastic gadgets? The cars? The guns? Major. Snake, wouldn't you like to have a gun shaped like a pen? What good is a pen gonna do me in the jungle? I'd look like a fool. Then what about a snake-shaped gun? You could make it look like you're grappling with a giant snake and then get a shot in on the enemy while they're distracted. Okay, now you're being ridiculous. We'll make you a snake-shaped gun that folds up and fits into an attaché case. Will you give it a rest? Oh, I get it. You're worried about how to handle the ladies, aren't you? No. I knew it. Hm, to tell you the truth, 
I don't like the idea of playing hanky-panky with enemy femme fatales either. But that's part of Bond's appeal. You could learn a thing or two from him. I mean, what about this Eva? What are you planning to do with her? I... I don't even trust her yet. No, that's not what I mean. You, you can't let yourself get involved. This is a game of spy versus spy. She's using you just as much as you're using her. I realize that. You've got to grab the initiative, and to do that, you have to get the upper hand in the relationship. That's what a spy is supposed to do. Get the upper hand? I don't think I'm cut out for that mission. Maybe if you change your code name to 00 Snake. Hey, Jar. 007 is the biggest thing to come out of England since the Mayflower. I wouldn't be surprised if they made 20 more of those movies. Didn't you know? The Major is a huge James Bond fan. Don't get him worked up like this. Worked up? Maybe you don't realize this, but now that you've got him started talking about Bond, I'm going to have to listen to him lecture for a whole hour after he gets off the radio. You have my sympathy. Well, it's too bad you can't enjoy such a great movie, though. I guess I'm just one of those people who can't enjoy spy flicks. <laughs>